Hi, I'm Attentive Dragon, and welcome to my Let's Play series covering Ultima 6, The False Prophet, the classic computer role-playing game from 1990. As you can see, this is part zero of the series. I start the actual gameplay with part one. This video is going to be just me talking about the games themselves, so if you'd like to get right to the actual Let's Play content, feel free to skip ahead to the next video. I'm going to place a link to that in the description below. But before I get to the actual gameplay, I'd like to take a brief moment to go over the Ultima series as a whole, and review the stories of the first five games in the series, just in case anyone's unfamiliar with them. I'll also go over the rules for my Let's Play series. Warning, spoilers follow. The first three games in the Ultima series, retroactively titled The Age of Darkness, were landmark games in the computer role-playing genre. Although graphically dated and a bit simple in terms of gameplay, they were challenging and sprawling adventures that straddled the line between traditional fantasy settings and sci-fi adventure. In the first several games, no one was really all that concerned with maintaining continuity, and later games sometimes completely contradict things that happened earlier on. As the series progressed, a lot of what happened in the first few games was retcon to make one unified lore for the Ultima series, and we're going to discuss the story in light of that later, canonical version of the story. First, I have to mention Lord British. Based on the real-life creator of the Ultima series, Richard Garriott, Lord British is a kindly king who rules justly over his subjects in the far-off world of Sosaria. Originally from Earth, he quickly adapted to life in this strange land of magic and adventure, helped by his good friend Shamino, a character also based on Garriott. British quickly rose to become a hero, and later a lord. At the time of Ultima I, he is one of many kings, each ruling over his own lands and peoples, and trying to defend his lands from the dark, wizard Mondain. Mondain was a gifted youth and a student of magic, but was cruel and enjoyed inflicting pain on others. His father, wishing to mitigate this tendency, planned to send him off for schooling and instruction in virtue. He offered Mondain a beautiful, magical gem that would harness the power of the sun if he succeeded in his studies. Mondain agreed to this, and that night slew his father in his sleep, taking the gem because he was ready for power now, and his father was in the way. Using his dark magic to twist the gem's power, he created the Black Gem of Immortality to preserve his life, and then unleashed his wrath upon the kingdoms of Caesarea. Orcs, trolls, and other twisted creations of evil roamed the land. People fled to the safety of the strongholds of the kings, who tried to keep their people safe, but could do little to stem the onslaught of Mondain's forces, nor to end his terrible reign. Lord British sent out the call for a hero, and someone answered. The stranger from another world appeared, and through many adventures grew in strength and power, journeying deep into the dark dungeons from which the monsters spawned, and into outer space itself to learn the secrets of Mondain's weakness. Ultimately, the stranger was able to travel back in time to where Mondain had hid himself, destroy the Gem of Immortality, and slay Mondain, returning peace to the land. Because of the changes to the timeline and the upheaval caused by the destruction of the gem, the world changed and some regions were lost entirely, including a kingdom ruled by Lord British's good friend Shamino. As things settled down, more people turned to British, recognizing his wisdom and fairness, and the stability of his kingdom. Everything was good for about as long as it would take for a youth to grow into an adult. It turned out that Mondain had an apprentice, and she was also his lover. Infuriated by his death and seeking revenge, Minax appeared, more powerful than even her master had been. Again, Sosaria was beset by monsters and dark forces, and she even turned her attentions to Earth, seeking to destroy the world from which the Savior had come, unleashing a nuclear holocaust upon our world. The stranger from another world once again stepped forward, traveling between different times and finally confronting Minax with the magical quicksword Anilio. The stranger slew Minax, and all of the destruction she had wrought to both worlds and to the timeline was erased. Peace again returned, but again it did not last. Mondain and Minax had together created a progeny, a child of sorts, a being that was part machine, part daemon, and part magical creation, Exodus. Exodus was methodical, 
and patient, and it used its vast intellect to wrest control of the very forces of nature to rain destruction down upon Sosaria. It pulled the great earth serpent from its resting place in the ethereal void, setting it as a guardian for its castle on the Isle of Fire, and from there it directed its terrible vengeance upon the people. Again the stranger arrived, and together with three companions, he traveled deep into the dungeons, across the land, and to another world known as Ambrosia, to gain the power and insight necessary to defeat the fell beast. Finally, the companions bypassed the Earth Serpent, stepped onto the Isle of Fire, and stormed Exodus's stronghold, Castle Death. Fighting through a gauntlet of incredibly powerful foes, the heroes won through to the center of the stronghold. There, using special punch cards, they tricked the machine portion of Exodus into self-destructing, ending the threat, and saving the world of Caesarea once again. Once again, the defeat of evil racked the land with cataclysmic changes, and when all had settled, the land had formed into the familiar shape it would remain as for the rest of the Ultima series. Famine and conflict ensued in the wake of this chaos, and it was Lord British who helped the people to recover from these tragedies, ultimately unifying the land under his rule. In honor of the defeat of evil and the passing of the troubled times, the kingdom was renamed Britannia. And by the time of Ultima IV, the troubles of the past have all been forgotten. The land is at peace, and Lord British rules with justice and fairness over the whole of the land. British was concerned, though, that his people were missing something. They were lacking a greater purpose. He wanted them to cease striving against each other in armed conflicts and begin striving to improve themselves. He established centers of learning, and after much study and discussion, he's, he and his advisors together derived a system of principles and virtues. Now, in the lore of Ultima, there are three great principles from which the eight virtues derive, and they're represented by these three circles. Truth, love, and courage. Now, truth gives us the virtue of honesty, exemplified in the respect for truth. Love gives us compassion, shown in the love for others. Courage gives us valor, which is the courage to stand up against risks. Now, combining the principles in various ways gives us the remaining virtues. Justice is truth tempered by love. Sacrifice is the courage to give of oneself in the name of love. And honor is the courage to seek and uphold the truth. Now the tiny circle in the middle here, touching all three circles, is spirituality. Seeking truth, love, and courage from oneself and from the world around you. Now, the absence of any of these virtues can lead to the sin of pride, which points the way to our final eighth virtue. This circle, touching none of the principles, yet encircling them all, is humility, the last but certainly never the least important of the virtues. As the virtues are derived from the three principles, the principles are themselves derived from the axiom of infinity. The Ultima Games, from Ultima Four onward, delve deeper into the meaning of these ideas, exploring what they mean, what happens when they're followed, when they're abused, or when they're twisted, and what it means to be truly a virtuous person. As Ultima IV begins, the eight largest towns of Britannia have each adopted one of these virtues, the people there striving to exemplify it. Lord British once again sends out a call for a hero, but this time not to defeat a great evil, but to follow a path of virtue, to master all eight paths and become an example to the people, a living avatar of virtue itself. Once again, the stranger from another world appeared and traveled the land. The stranger spoke with the people of the towns, met the eight heroes who would later be known as the companions of the avatar, we'll be meeting those folks in the course of our own playthrough of Ultima VI. With their help, the stranger learned about the virtues and became strong in body, mind, and spirit. An ancient prophecy foretold the coming of one who would possess the strength of an army, 
the vision of a prophet and the heart of a saint, and that this great one would bring an end to the struggle between the darkness and the light. As foretold, the stranger ultimately triumphed in all eight virtues, assembled the key of three parts, and ascended into the darkest, deepest dungeon, the great Stygian Abyss. Fighting dark forces until reaching the deepest chamber, the stranger was tested one last time and proved devotion to the virtues, and was granted access to an artifact of incredible power, the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom, a magical book born of the void that had the power to give the one and true correct answer to any question. Reading from the book, the stranger was enlightened and became the avatar of virtue. Ultimately, the Avatar returned home. Lord British created a great council who sealed the dungeons, ending the constant threat of monsters roaming the land. They also raised the Codex from deep within the Abyss. This caused a great upheaval. A massive new island rose from the sea. The council enshrined the Codex there and named the new island the Isle of the Avatar. Great stone guardians were placed to watch over the Codex and only allow access to those on a sacred quest. Britannia entered into a new age, a renaissance, and all was good in the land. The creation of the island caused a great void to form underground, however. A vast new underworld was born, connected to the dungeons at their deepest levels, and it became the breeding ground for horrible monsters. Worse. A series of terrible circumstances caused three terrible beings to be born from three of the lost shards of Mondain's Shattered Gem. If the Avatar was a representative of virtue itself, these beings were its opposite. Just as the Avatar championed truth, love, and courage, these three Shadow Lords championed the opposing principles of falsehood, hatred, and cowardice. When Lord British led an expedition of brave adventurers into the new underworld, the three Shadow Lords ambushed him, killing almost all in his party, and spiriting him away. They then used their power to corrupt the hearts of men in order to twist the ambitions of the noble Lord Blackthorn who had been left in charge as regent. Blackthorn's rule soon turned into tyranny, and under his twisted vision the virtues became law. Thou shalt tell the truth, or thou shalt lose thy tongue. Thou shalt donate half thy income to charity, or thou shalt have no income. Thou shalt fight to the death if challenged, or be banished to coward. The pursuit of virtue was replaced with oppression, and any who spoke out against this new regime were hunted down, and imprisoned, or killed. The eight companions of the Avatar were branded as traitors, and they went into hiding. Working together, they used magic to summon the Avatar back to Britannia, the Avatar, now a wanted fugitive, had to carefully travel the land, joining the resistance against Blackthorn's rule without being captured and imprisoned, while seeking a way to destroy the Shadow Lords. Finally, after great struggle, the Avatar was able to enter the vast and dangerous underworld, find the gem shards that had birthed each Shadow Lord, and use these shards to destroy them. Then, delving deep into the new and terrifying Dungeon Doom, the Avatar found Lord British's prison, and using the crown jewels of Lord British, was able to free the true king and return him to his rightful throne. Lord British gave Blackthorn a choice, to return and face the judgment of the Great Council and a certain death sentence, or to accept banishment. Lord British used his most mysterious artifact, the mystical Orb of the Moons, to open a moon gate a doorway to another place that neither British nor Blackthorn had ever seen or knew about. Blackthorn would not have his title or riches or followers there, but he would have his life. After some thought, Blackthorn walked into exile and was not seen again. The Avatar returned home, and time passed. We can assume, or at least hope, that life has returned to normal in Britannia, and that Lord British rules in peace. This is where we enter the story at the beginning of Ultima 6. One last thing, the rules. Part of every Ultima game, at least Ultimas 4, 5, and 6, is learning and using the mantras of the virtues. 
Now these do not change from game to game, so someone who played the prior games does not need to learn them again by talking to the townspeople. However, I will go ahead and act as if we don't remember the mantras, and go through each quest in its entirety in order to give a more full experience. Ultima 6 also has several opportunities to cheat. The Avatar is given the Orb of the Moons early on in the game, and this allows fast travel to any town and any shrine as well as to some other places of interest. This makes the game much easier, but again, it's a little bit like cheating. I will use the ore, but only after first traveling to each place normally. Once we've been to a location, I will use the orb to save time on subsequent visits, but I'm not going to use it to jump ahead. Likewise, there's a cheat menu that allows the summoning of any item, and also the modification of some player statistics. I'm not going to use that on this playthrough, except in the case of some unforeseen game-breaking bug that might make a needed item disappear. Other than that, we will steer clear of the cheating. Lastly, I want to give a shout out to the Ultima Dragons fan group. This video series would not be possible without the help of various dragons who have given advice and information on series lore, and who run the many Ultima wikis, and who've created in-depth walkthroughs. Their devotion to keeping these wonderful games alive is what makes a video series like this possible. Thank you. For more information on the Ultimate Dragons, visit udic.org or head over to our home on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash Ultimate Dragons. Alright, I think we're ready to begin the Let's Play series. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.